Yeah, I forgot to make a title for this one. Um, I was going to call this, this story Dylan and James uh, because, well, normally you're supposed to change names uh, of the people you're telling a story about, but they really pissed me off with this story. So, fuck them. It's going to be Dylan and James. That's the real names. Um, so this is starts, I was about 16 years old. Uh, me and my crew of friends and me and my sister's crew of friends are heading to Kenosi Lake. And Kenosi Lake is a cottage town next to a provincial park. So me and my, like, well, me and my friends are going to go to the, the park and just kind of hang around, get into some shenanigans, right? And my sister's friends, they're just going to go to the bar, the Moosehead, get drunk and all that kind of stuff. Um, so our plan... My crew, Dylan and James, we go to our buddy's house, uh, his cabin. Uh, his fake name will be Jeff Keats. Jeff Keats's cabin, whatever. Um, and he usually has like a big party every year, but the camp, the campsite's like you can't have it this year. So we have a limited time of when he can be there. I keep knocking this. I'm sorry. Um, and the problem is, Dylan and James, they only have. A short, you know, short time to finish all the booze that they brought. So Dylan, you know, starts knocking back all of his rye. James starts, you know, knocking back all of his pilsner. And then it's, you know, time to head out into the campground area. And so everybody from Jeff Keats's fake name, uh, his cabin, head out into the park area of a crew of about about thirty, about thirty sixteen-year-olds just cruising around. And there's a bunch of other, you know, teenagers cruising around because we can't get in the bar, so we're just going to go around this campsite and all this, all this kind of fun. Just try to find a party or, or something to do. And we kind of go by this one little tent, and it pops out this guy who's a little bit older than us, but he went to our high school, so we all know him, and everybody kind of wave high and just keep on going because the guy is he's a bit of a wiener. So it's like, let's get high and keep on going, and... He got made fun of a lot, so I mean, he started working out a bunch, and he's just like, oh, wait, you're still a wiener, but you're, you have muscles. You're, you're a wiener with muscles. So we're just going to say hello and keep on moving. So we start moving. But Dylan's like, no, I want to talk to this guy for some reason. Like, I, don't, we don't, I, don't, I don't know why. he would want to talk to him. He's a wiener with muscles. Just say hi and keep on moving. Yeah, we know him, but whatever. So he's chatting away. So me, Dylan, and James just hanging out. Dylan talks to this guy, and our crew of friends, all 27 of them, keep moving on. We'll catch up to him. And after their little conversation is done, we, you know, try to find them and go over and basically make every single wrong turn we could. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, shit, we're, we're lost. And I'm 16, so this is a few years ago. This is early 2000s, so this is like before everybody had a cell phone. I've never been here before, and I'm just like, all there is is little, little lights, but there's not even campgrounds, and we're so lost, it's just roads, lights, and trees. That's it. And that, it got worse, because that was the point where all that booze Dylan and James drank just hit them. So not only am I lost, I have two drunk assholes that I have to designate walk around just to find our way back. At first, they're okay. We take a few more sh wrong turns, and we end up at a highway. So like, this is the most opposite place we could be at. The wrong place is at a highway. So I'm like, all right, let's turn around and try to trace our steps. They agree to this, but decide, oh, we're going to do an adventure, so we should probably have a memento for this adventure, a yield sign. So they start you know, pushing this yield sign back and forth. And then Dylan says something that was going on in my brain, which was, stop. But then he goes on and says, I got this. <laughs> and he says this because Dylan is the most naturally strong person I've ever met in my life. Just little things, he's just, just susceptible to building muscle mass. Even at 16, he was way stronger than every adult in here. And that's really not saying much because we're all like artsy types, but still... 16-year-old, way stronger than everybody in here. I've checked you all out. Way better muscle mass than all of you. Don't be offended. So he's like, wait, I got this, and just goes and lifts this yield sign out of the ground. So now there's a crew of three and a yield sign, and we're just 
walking around, but it's just kind of awkward to carry, you know, big, long, nine-foot yield sign. So they're like, oh, we just, we just want the yield sign part off. So they start, like, jumping on it, just trying to knock it off. And, you know, say what you want about technology in Saskatchewan, you know, in the early 2000s. Yeah, not everybody had cell phones, but our sign technology was very good. And they could just not get this yield part off. So they start jumping on it. Some more, and as they're doing this, there is two crews of teenagers walking towards each other. I don't know these people, but they are angry. They're screaming, you know, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I don't know, I couldn't know what the problem was, but someone's feelings were hurt. So they're screaming at each other, and it's like, like West Side Story, you know, there's like the two groups coming toward one another, and it's just like a very intense sight in front of me as opposed to the site behind me, which is, now you jump, now you jump, now you jump, now you jump, over and over again. Getting a little angry at this point. Not as mad as the, one of the teenagers, who I'm assuming his feelings were the most hurt, because he turns around and says, quit fucking with the sign! As he says this, James, this is like on just perfect timing, Leaps in the air, lands on the sign, a real good jump, makes the loudest noise possible. It's just like an eternity. I look at him, and then I look over at the angry teenager. And he just goes, like, ah, fuck you, fuck you, doing that crowd. I was like, okay, we survived that. Leave the sign, let's get going. So we start moving along. And Dylan's like, oh, I gotta, pee. I gotta pee. Reasonable request. Fine, but I'm still getting really mad at this point because we're lost and these fucking drunk idiots and drunk teenagers almost killed us. It's like, all right, fine, go, go take a pee. So it goes into the forest, takes a piss, takes a couple steps coming back in and falls. I don't know if he fell on his own. No, fuck it. It's my story. Dylan fell on his own piss. All right? He falls in and he just doesn't want to get up. He hurt his leg. He's just like, I don't, I don't want to get up. So I'm going to march into the forest and like, I'm really getting mad. Almost at the tipping point. I'm like, Dylan, get up. I'm like, no, I don't want to get up. He's just drunk, 16-year-old, whiskey drunk. So he's just like laid out. And he's just like, gone. I'm just like, I reached the tipping point of anger. This is the last time I got mad. I don't get mad very often. It was nine years ago. I was mad for two seconds. This is all, it all, it's all I need. All I need two seconds. First second, me reaching down and grabbing Dylan. Second second, me picking him up and putting him on his feet. I'm not making that up. I get fucking Hulk rage when I'm mad. <laughs> two seconds, all I need to jump ah, on. Get going. And smell like piss. So we're marching along and kind of relaxed now and we're just moving along a little bit more and then good bit of luck we run into our friend Trooper actual nickname and he uh, he's lost but he kind of knows where he's going which is better than us because I'm completely lost and these drunk idiots and, so, and he eventually runs into some girl he knows and we uh, you know start getting in the right direction and then Finally, a, a truck pulls up with all of our buddies in it. He's like, all right, get in. I was like, all right, just take me to, take me to my car. So, drives in there, pulls up. As we pull up beside my car, my sister and her friends pull up at the same time. I had completely forgotten about my sister up until this point. Remember, I'm 16, completely lost, no cell phone. My sister f is pretty on the edge all the time, she would have been losing her fucking mind, like, calling the ambulance, it was just perfect, this perfect symmetry of pulling in, and it was wonderful, I'm very happy, um, and I could, you know, relax, and the next day, you know, we all head home, it was fine, the next day, I called Dylan up and, and tell him about what happened, oh, he has no memory, whatsoever, forgets the whole thing, but, this is kind of a testament to like Dylan's a bit 
I love the guy, but a bit of a dick that he is. I think this must have been a joke against me to make me get angry again. In our yearbook, when we graduated, I was reading through all of our entries. And sure enough, most memorable moments. May long weekend where we got lost. He doesn't remember anything. <laughs> so, all I'm going to say to end this is Dylan and James, uh, fuck you. Seriously. Thank you.